Ezekiel 46. Thus saith the Lord God, The gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days. This is quite opposite to what the Sabbath. Usually the gates would be open during the, the working day and shut on the Sabbath, just as Nehemiah. But on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened. So the Sabbath days, this gate is opened. The rest of the days it's closed. On the first day of the month it's opened. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch, that gate without, and shall stand by the post of the gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offering, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of, of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbath and in the new moons. Colossians 2.16, Zechariah 14.20 And the burnt offering that the prince shall offer unto the Lord in the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. And the meat offering shall be an ephah for a ram and the meat offering for, for the lambs, as he shall be able to give. So it's what he has to give. The ram it's set. And an hen of oil to an ephah. And in the day of the new moon, first day of the month, it shall be a young bullet without blemish. And six lambs. And a ram they shall be without blemish. And you shall prepare a meat offering, and an ephah for a burnt bullock. Animal activists are not going to be happy in the millennium. But it's also a barbecue for the priest, as we read last night and the night before. It's an offering up to God, and the priests are allowed to take it and eat it. See, God just doesn't say, here, throw this chunk of meat on the grill and, and waste it. He gives it to his priests. God never wastes anything. When Jesus fed the 5,000, what was the next command to the disciples? Go pick up the, fag the fragments. And in the day of the new moons, it shall be a young bullock without blemish and six lambs, and a ram, they shall be without blemish. And he shall prepare a meat offering, an ephah for a bullock, an ephah for a ram, and for the lambs according as his hand shall attain to, again, what he has, a hen of oil to an ephah. And when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch of that gate, and he shall go forth by the way thereof. But when the people of the land shall come before the Lord, and that is coming before the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that's not like the, the presence of God through a fire or through smoke. That is in the presence of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. In his presence means Jesus is staring at them, and they're staring at him. In the solemn feast, he that entereth in by the way of the north gate to worship <clears throat> shall go out by the way of the south gate. And he that entereth by the way of the south gate shall go forth by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by the way of the gate whereby he came in, but shall go forth over against it. So verse 9, if I can summarize, kind of, you're not going to have a Walmart entrance where everybody's going in and out the doors, no matter if the entrance says entrance or exit. You're going to go through one set of doors, and the opposite doors you're going to go out of. You're not going to go back through the doors that you came through. So in other words, when you set yourself forward for God, you don't look back, and you don't go back. That's what it's showing. You go back, you're violating God.
you go forward. And notice how it's the entrance right ahead of the entrance you come through. And the prince in the midst of them, when they go in, shall go in, and when they go forth, shall go forth. You go in, you do your business, and then you leave. And in the feast, and in the solemnities, the meat offering shall be an ephah to a bullet, an ephah to a ram, and to the lambs, as he is able to give, a hen of oil to the ephah. Now you know every word of God is pure and set forth, because he could have said, a feast and in this summonies and meat offering shall be an ephah to a bullet and to a ram. That would be in proper English. But an ephah to a ram and an ephah to a bullet. There, there's something to that that the Lord has added those words. That there is a word count in the Bible. Chapters are set up. Verses are set up. Wording is set up. All by an act of God. And it's remarkable. Check out all the 1611s, chapter 16, verse 11s in your Bible. Check out the verse 13s of the Bible. The 1313. Check out the verses that, that say 666. Or chapter 66, verse 6. God lays it all out. Now when the prince shall prepare a voluntary burn offering of his own will, or peace offering voluntary unto the Lord, one shall then open him the gate that looketh toward the east, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offering as he did on the Sabbath day. So this is outside the Sabbath day. This is when he's coming to offer what he wants to offer just for the Lord, just because he wants to. I mean, shouldn't be forced. As he did on the Sabbath day, then he shall go forth, after his going forth, one shall shut the gate. Thou shalt daily prepare a burnt offering unto the Lord. This is every day. Of a lamb of the first year without blemish. Thou shalt prepare it every morning. Thou shalt prepare a meat offering for it every morning. The sixth part of an ethah. The third part of a hint of oil. To temper with the fine flour. A meat offering continually by the perpetual ordinance unto the Lord. Thus shall they prepare the lamb and the meat offering and the oil every morning for a continual burnt offering. There's no evening offering. That's gone. Here a lamb is used, but it's only for the morning. Thus saith the Lord God, if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be his to the year of liberty. After it shall return to the prince, but his inheritance shall be for his sons, for them. Servants in the millennium. Servants differ from a son. I'm not a servant of God. I'm a son of God. But I serve him. And the inheritances I get, no matter what time period comes, no matter what liberty, I retain the inheritance of God by being his son and not his servant. I'm part of the family. Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression. Which they've been doing to thrust them out of their possession they're going to keep their land their goods their lot but he shall give his son's inheritance out of his own possession that my people be not scattered every man from his possession so this prince is going to have a lot of land to give and he brought me through the entry which was at the side of the gate into the holy chambers of the priest which looked toward the north Behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. Then said he unto me, This is the place where the priest shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering, where they shall bake the meat offering 
They shall bear them not out into the outer court to sanctify the people. So here's a little kitchen kind of place for boiling and for baking. And he brought me forth into the outer court and caused me to pass by the front, the four corners of the court. And behold, in every corner of the court, there was a court. In the four corners of the court, there was courts joined of 40 cubits long and 30 broad. These four cor corners were of one measure. And, they, and there was a row of buildings round about it in them, round about them four. And in it was made with boiling places under the rows round about. Then said he unto me, These are the places of them that boil, where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. 1 Samuel 2.13 So there's a place set apart. The brazen altars where you put the meat right on the fire. Here's a place where they boil. And if you remember, Eli's sons would come in with the pitchfork and stab in the pot to grab the meat. So, Old Testament's coming back. 